Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is a series of videos about Google Cloud Basics. They are deliberately short, fast-paced, and occasionally quirky just to keep your attention. They've been designed to work well on mobile devices like tablets and mobile phones, so that they can be consumed on the move or when traveling, and are also available as podcasts. And lastly, the legal bit. Although I work for Google, the opinions stated here are my own, not those of my company. I hope you enjoy these and find them useful. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Google Compute Engine provides virtual machines in the cloud. GCP instances are available in many different types or families. These instance types are typically optimized for a specific workload, such as compute, memory, or additional hardware such as GPUs and TPUs. Each Compute Engine instance will belong to a GCP project and a GCP region and zone. Instances can use local SSDs and persistent disks, as well as other cloud-managed storage and databases. Each instance can also be attached to one or more VPC networks. Premium networking also provides access to Google's high-speed, low-latency fiber backbone. Instances can use fine-grained access control through IAM permissions, service accounts, firewall rules, and advanced tools like Security Command Center. Compute Engine supports images and templates, as well as various deployment strategies such as standalone VM, unmanaged and managed instance groups. Compute Engine can be consumed a number of different ways, including spot instances, sustained use and committed use discounts, annual commitments and enterprise discounts. Free credits and free product tiers are also available. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Each GCP resource will belong to a GCP project. A project organizes all of your Google Cloud resources. It consists of users and authentication, APIs, billing and monitoring. You can view all of your projects from the console, including any top-level GCP organizations. If you select a project, you can view its settings.
to create a new project, specify a name, organization and location. Once you've used any free credits, you will need to associate a billing account and payment method with the project. Billing can also be viewed from the console. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Google Compute Engine uses regions and zones. A region is a specific geographical location where you can host your resources. Regions have three or more zones. Using multiple zones in a region reduces the risk of an infrastructure outage affecting all resources simultaneously. And using multiple different regions provides an even higher degree of protection from failures. And to automatically manage multiple instances across multiple regions and zones, you can also set up a managed instance group. Using regions and zones allows you to design robust systems with resources spread across multiple geographies and failure domains. All sat on Google's high-speed global fiber backbone. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. A VPC is a private, isolated virtual network partition that provides network management functions for other GCP resources. It provides connectivity, firewalling and routing functions.
traditional VPCs are bound to individual regions, but Google Cloud VPCs are global in scope and can span multiple regions. This means GCP resources can communicate across other regions without needing VPNs or other complex routing. VPCs are global and network subnets are regional and individual zones sit on top of these regional subnets. In this example, GCE instances 1, 2 and 3 are all in different zones, but within the same region. Because they are on the same regional subnet, they can all communicate directly with each other on internal IP addresses. The same applies in other regions for instances 4, 5 and 6, and for instances 7, 8 and 9. If VPC firewall rules allow, each instance can also talk to any other instance in the VPC directly because VPCs are global. VPCs can also be used with shared VPC, cloud router, firewall rules, VPC peering and cloud VPN. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Compute Engine creates virtual machine instances based on Intel, AMD and ARM CPU processor architectures. In this example, we are selecting a Tau T2A instance based on an ARM Ampere CPU. Multiple instance types are available, including N1 and N2 general purpose on Intel, E2, general purpose on Intel and AMD and N2D general purpose on AMD. Tau T2D general purpose on AMD. Tau T2A general purpose on ARM. Many instance families also offer a higher or lower memory to CPU ratio. C2 on Intel for compute optimized. M1 and M2 on Intel for memory optimized. A1 on Intel and Nvidia GPU for accelerator optimized.
customer instances are also available if required, but may be slightly more expensive. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Google Compute Engine supports various types of storage, including block, object, and file. Local SSD is block storage which is accessed directly from within the operating system. It is non-persistent and data can be lost when the instance is shut down. It should only be used for temporary files. Persistent disk is persistent local block storage which is accessed directly from within the operating system. It is commonly used for virtual machine disks and any locally installed databases. Persistent disks are available in many different types that can be used to balance performance and cost. Object is persistent storage which is accessed via an API and a universal resource identifier. Cloud storage stores files and any associated metadata in buckets and is available in multiple different tiers. File store is persistent storage which is accessed over the network via the NFS protocol. File Store provides a shared file system for individual files and folders and unstructured data. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. To be able to set up Compute Engine networking properly, we need to understand a few things. VPCs or virtual private clouds, GCP regions, GCP zones, network subnets within regions, which zone are compute instances running in and how to attach one or more network interface cards, NICs,
When creating the instance in the console, we first need to expand the Advanced Options section. Then expand the Networking section. Then select the Network Interface or NIC that we wish to configure. From here we then select the network which corresponds to our desired region. Then we select the name of the subnetwork which corresponds to the desired network subnet or network segment. For the internal IP, we can select an ephemeral IP address. Ephemeral is just another word for temporary. Or alternatively, we could request a static IP address, which is not temporary and should not change over time. We can optionally repeat this process if we also require an external IP address in addition to the internal IP address we just set up in the previous step. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Good morning and welcome to Security 101. Welcome. We've got four security topics for you today. Identity and access management, network security, application security, and data security. Let's go. If you are new to identity and access management, you could start with IAM permissions for users and groups. Cloud identity for user authentication. Service accounts for when applications and services need to communicate with other applications and services. If you are new to network security, you could start with Firewall rules to control access to ports and protocols. VPC service controls for perimeter security. Key management for encryption of data in transit. If you are new to application security, you could start with Cloud Armor for protecting applications. Apigee for API endpoint security. Recapture to protect your website from fraud and abuse. 
if you are new to data security, you could start with Beyond Corp Enterprise for Zero Trust. Identity Aware Proxy to control user access and authentication. Data Loss Prevention to protect sensitive data. Security Keys for Data Encryption. One more thing. Don't forget about Security Command Center for central management of security tools. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. With Compute Engine, there are a few different ways to install software. In this video, we will cover two of them, via an SSH session and via a startup script. In the first example, we will install the Cloud Operations Agent into an existing GCE instance. In the second example, we will install the Cloud Monitoring Agent and the Apache Web Server from a startup script onto a new GCP instance. For example one, we will start an SSH session from the GCE VM Instances page. I'll paste the code below into the SSH session to copy the installation script to the VM using the curl command. And then run the next command to install the agent. After a few minutes, we can check the agent status in the monitoring section. For example 2, we will install the Cloud Operations Agent as before and the Apache Web Server on a new GC instance from a startup script and then open port 80 for HTTP access. The only option I'm going to change is the selection box to enable HTTP access for the Apache Web Server. Then click through to the Advanced section, then Management then to Automation, where we can see the Startup Script text box. And then paste in the code below to install the Cloud Monitoring Agents as before, but also install the Apache version 2 web server. Then finally create the instance. After a few minutes, we can see the agent in the Monitoring section and check the default web page in Apache version 2. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine.
In a previous video, we covered installing the cloud monitoring agents and the Apache web server. In this video, we will create another instance running the cloud monitoring agents and the Nginx web server. We will then create an uptime check for the Apache and Nginx web servers and view them in the monitoring dashboard. I'll create a new instance with the default settings. Here I'm going to tell the firewall to allow HTTP web traffic. And here I'm going to paste some code into the startup script text box to install the agents and Nginx web server. We can click the external IP link to check that our new Nginx web server is working correctly. From the monitoring section, we can generate uptime checks for our web servers. Firstly, provide a name for the uptime check. Then specify the instance to monitor and the response codes we are expecting from a healthy instance. For each instance with an uptime check, we can view the current status. Each region will show a red, amber, green status if uptime checks are in place with accompanying charts. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Compute Engine will send logs to cloud logging if you have the agent installed inside any VMs. This is the main logging dashboard. Here, we will highlight the queries, filters, events, the log entries, and the log details. You can use a predefined report or create one of your own using the filters. Here, we're filtering by all VMs. And here, we're filtering by a specific VM. In this case, VM example one. And here is the actual query text that was generated by applying those filters. Next, we will set up a log sync to send logs to another location. Our first log sync will send logs to a Google Cloud storage bucket. We provide a sync name destination storage bucket, and any filters for what events to include or exclude. Our 
second log sync will send logs to a BigQuery dataset. We provide a sync name, destination dataset, and this time I'll paste text in from a filter I created earlier. This is Google Cloud Basics. Next up, Google Compute Engine. Billing can be managed from the console. broken down by cost or by project. Individual budgets and alerts can be configured. alerts can be sent when certain thresholds are reached. Budgets can be set over monthly, quarterly, yearly or custom time periods. costs and forecasted costs are shown for the remainder of the billing period. Budgets and alerts only provide information. They do not automatically apply a hard cap on spending. For extremely detailed billing analysis, Billing can be set up to automatically export data to BigQuery. You've been watching Google Cloud Basics. Hi. I'm Jason Mears. Congratulations on getting to the end of this series. I hope you enjoyed these and found them useful. Please have a look at my other videos and training courses and leave a comment if they helped you.